Greetings from the black holes of Dakota Toritary, United States of Advertising. Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1. Good vibrations at your service to describe what I think I may have come up with as a final solution to the mobile and portable conundrum that I face with this new vehicle little number nine. Tomorrow a uh, little number nine's going into the shop though and it needs some work. I need to get some studded tires on that thing uh, to contend with the upcoming winter and also I need to figure out why the doggone thing had trouble starting this morning at the balmy temperature of plus 29 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it may need a new battery, a tune-up, possibly a bunch of other stuff but you know you buy a used car that old for that kind of a bargain price and you're going to expect to have to do a few things to it the Carfax didn't say anything outstanding about it though so I don't know exactly what's going on maybe it's just the battery we'll, we'll have to wait and see because there in no way I'm gonna travel any long distances in a vehicle that won't start below 29 degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> But what I'm going to do, I think, is get one of those vertical antennas. Now, I, my memory, um, back from the 1960s and 1970s, remembers the 18V and the 14AVQ. These were antennas manufactured by a company called High Gain. I believe that they still exist, and still, doubtless, some companies make antennas with base mounts similar to these. They're basically a piece of bent metal with an insulator down here and then you have an aluminum pole that comes somewhat up from the base like that. You screw the base into whatever mounting surface you want it to go into. You can U-bolt it around a mast. That's what is usually done but in this case I think I would probably have to um, use heavy-duty self-tapping screws and put it in right about here. Right about in the middle of little number nine from back to front. And here is the little aluminum tubing thing sticking up. Down here an SO239 for coaxial cable. Now when I'm operating portable I can park this car I can attach the RG8U that I have. I believe it's called uh, RG13 or something like that now to the base and extend this thing up and construct it as an ordinary vertical and then lay radials down on the ground from the base as you would normally do at any fixed station. So that would be an excellent portable option. As for mobile, well now we get into a slightly different state of affairs. See if I can just erase these little particles that I want to erase and not erase the ones that I don't want to erase. Perhaps extend this tubing up so that it goes to the maximum allowed legal height for highway driving, which in my understanding is probably about 10 foot above the pavement or 8 foot above the base and now it's just a piece of tubing like that nothing connected to the bottom there I arranged somehow or another to feed ladder line from the drivers or rather the passenger seat where the radio and transmatch are ladder line up through this tubing and then with a special insulator that I'd have to contrive myself. I run wires down one to the right rear corner with a little insulator here and the other to the left front corner with a little insulator out of sight somewhere down here and make sure that these are equally long so that the antenna is fed in the center. I expect I'd probably be able to get away with about 10 feet on either leg 
of this thing and the feed line itself probably about 12 feet or so and uh, that means that you'd actually have 22 feet of of uh, material on either side of the balanced uh, system 12 feet in the uh, feed line and 10 feet in the antenna which would make the thing resonant on something like around 10 megahertz if it were all stretched out as a dipole so this thing had probably worked down to about 10 megahertz I would suppose without too much uh, loss and it, and it does not need an RF ground that's particularly good because it's a balanced system and believe me when it comes to RF grounds this vehicle doesn't cut it it's not as bad as a plastic vehicle but almost so that might work uh, and it probably raised some eyebrows maybe a few troopers eyebrows but maybe sometimes they're just interested in your in your stuff you know they want to see what's going on with you even though they know it's not illegal it's rather unusual you also of course when you're operating mobile have to be aware of the um, laws in your state that are evolving in regarding texting while driving because some of these laws may affect amateur radio operation so that is a tentative plan but again this vehicle little number nine is not really meant for long distance road travel so I don't know how practical or how often I would actually use such a thing and whether or not I travel at all depends to some extent on my finances and on my health if I do travel it'll go it'll be to see my dear old mom and dad in Rochester Minnesota my mother is 91 and my dad is 90 going to turn 91 in February and you know I think they're both just about as sharp as I am which ain't saying much of course but it's saying a lot for people those age so that's quite a haul though in the winter across the Dakota Territory in Minnesota uh, province can be pretty rough weather and if you have a car that will not start at temperatures below 29 degrees Fahrenheit and you're going to drive across there at Christmas time? My, 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 you got yourself a prescription for disaster. Stan Jubilisco, so of course, I am just a walking prescription for disaster, so that's nothing new to me. Stan Jubilisco, W1, good vibrations, saying 73 for now and so long.